There's a waterfall behind me, a volcano to my right, the Arctic Ocean to my left, and horses absolutely everywhere. There's only one place we can be. Welcome to Iceland. 3,000 miles from home Trying to say That I will get there soon 30 days I walk down this way Singing my madness to the moon I met a cat on a tree And it talked to me About things we don't see I asked it how do I know which is the right way to go to get me home And it said don't look for a reason, don't look for another way Cause anyway we'll get you home, you can't get lost if you Iceland is located in the north, just below the Arctic Circle, and this country has been shaped by volcanoes and glaciers. Despite the really harsh conditions here, the Icelandic horse thrives as they are so well adapted to these conditions. There are about 100,000 horses here and 300,000 people, so today we're going to go and see Gudmar Peterson, one of the world's experts on Icelandic horses, and learn a bit more about the breed. Here they come! So I'm here with Gudmar Peterson, we're at Hesterland, which is about an hour away from Reykjavik. And as we were driving here, there were just horses absolutely everywhere. It's so beautiful here. So you are a sort of Icelandic horse expert. Tell me a bit more about the breed. Yeah, the Icelandic horse is a quite unique breed, I think we can say. Yep. They're known for, for quite a few things. Um, maybe the first thing to mention that I'd like to start with is the, is the history. Yep. They have a quite unique history. They are probably well, I think we are the, the most pure breed of horse in the world. They are the horses uh, that the Vikings brought with them when they found oh, wow. Iceland over a thousand yeah. years ago. So they have been uh, isolated here ever since. So for over a thousand years, there's been no mixing or anything. Uh, they have kind of been shaped by Icelandic nature, which was not always that easy to, to live with. Yeah. So, so we have a quite unique breed as far as that goes. They are known for other things such as their height or lack of yeah <laughs> they are um, lower to the ground than mm -hmm. most horse breeds but still always considered uh, <laughs> always considered horses and the reason for that is that the bone structure and the muscle system is strictly re strictly related to a horse not a pony yeah so if you look at their bone structure the knees and the feet they're uh, just like a horse they yeah. just happen to be low to the ground so they're strong like a horse but kind of uh, lower to the ground and we, we like to say they're the right size. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they are known for their gait abilities. Yeah. They're uh, the only breed we know that is ridden on five different gates. Wow, yeah. That means the fourth, uh, sorry, the three basic gates, the walk, trot, and canter, like you would see any, any three-gated horse do. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> the little friend. He wants to be in the party, too. So. Uh. And then the fourth gate would be this tult, which is a four-beats single-foot gate. And then a lot of them have a fifth gate called Flying Pace, which is oh, like yeah. a two-beat race gate. That's quite exhilarating to ride. They're also known for things like their color. They come on almost every color except Appaloosa. Oh, wow. They have a lot of mane, a lot of hair. Yes. <laughs> and maybe last but not least, in my opinion, they, are, they have a quite unique temperament. So they're kind of very full of common sense and easy to deal with. They're obviously still a strong horse. So yeah. But, but uh, in general, the temperaments are, 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 are very nice. So Goodmar is going to go and get on and show us a bit more about their paces, and I'm going to hopefully have a go as well. So something very important before I actually came to Iceland is I've had to disinfect all of my riding gear, and I've had to get new gloves as well, because Iceland is an island. All of the horses here are purebred, and they're very isolated. So a lot of the diseases that we have in Europe or in the US, these horses aren't used to. So isn't it true that um, a horse in Iceland, once it leaves Iceland, it's not allowed to come back? Right. Once it leaves the island, they can never return. So we can 
making export but never import. Even when we go to compete at like a world championships, competitors will have to leave their horses behind if they brought them from here. We do not do any vaccinations at all. So that's a very important point. So tell me a bit more about this horse that we have here. So this is Austerpungur. He is from, um, from here. He is born and raised at this farm. Oh, wow. I trained him from the beginning Aww. with some help. <laughs> uh, he is what we will call a four-gated horse. So I'm going to show you the three basic gates, walk, trot, and canter, as well as the tilt on this guy. He's still kind of young, but, but quite promising. So I'm going to start by showing you first those three basic gates, walk, trot, and canter. We start with walk. Walk is just what we are used to from the regular th three-gated horse. We want the walk extended, four beat. We want the horse to be kind of on the vertical if possible. Trot is also quite similar expectations to what you would be used to from a, a dressage horse. We want the horse to have good suspension. It's a two-beat diagonal gait. Canter at the same time, same thing. It's a quite similar expectations to a dressage horse. <coughs> the tilt is, like we said, four beat single foot gait. The horse will carry his neck a little bit higher in most cases. Riding the horse from my lower leg in towards my hand, where he should get soft. He's, he's quite technically trained, this guy. All right, just spend some time on walk and feel him out a little bit. Yep. Use your voice, he listens to that well, keep your contact. Drive him, drive him, use your reins, there you go. Good, that's it, you got it. Keep your contact, keep your contact, talk to him through the rain. I always want to kind of communicate through the rain. That's it. Little left and right sometimes if you feel like you're losing it. Not a hard rain, but I constantly communicate with him a little bit. There you go. Looking good. Very nice. Getting better and better. Good. Right. He's fast. <laughs> there you go. What do you think? What do you think he's, of the boy? Oh, he's so lovely. Also, because I've never done the tolt before, it was a lot smoother than I thought it was going to be because his trot was very bouncy, right. but it was very smooth, the toll, yeah. A big difference there, huh? Yes. We like it that way. We like that, that uh, gate separation, so we want, want a strong, nice trot with good suspension, but then a very smooth four-beat toll. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Glad he felt like really it. nice. Thank you, you very well. much. You yeah. well. <laughs> thank you very much for letting me ride him. Almost like you were born on an Icelandic horse. Right? Oh, thank you. Good. Oh. <laughs> Good lads. It's the first stallion you've ridden. Yeah, it's the first stallion I've ridden. You're a very good boy today. <laughs> oh. Now it was time for Goodmar to show us the flying pace, but unfortunately his horse lost a shoe just before. But because he's a trained farrier, he just popped one on, and then it was time to go outside and do the demonstration. And oh my goodness, it looks sped up. It is so fast. So we actually had to put some slow-mo clips in so you could actually see what it properly looks like. And it was very impressive. I had such an incredible time at Hestland. However, we then had to move north and explore the rest of the island.
currently travelling in the north. Behind us is Akureyri and we're on our way to Husavik where lava horse is. So on our travels we've seen lots of exciting things. Literally everywhere you look there are Icelandic horses. So yesterday we saw some sleeping by the side of the road. They were really tame as well. They were so cute. And then also we went to the coast and there were some beautiful views. And we also saw a couple of seals and we saw these really cute little baby goslings as well um, in the water playing with their mum. So that was really adorable as well to see and there's just so much nature and wildlife here and of course the views are just absolutely stunning. Something else is that it's actually been really warm while we've been here in Iceland. Although I'm wearing a woolly jumper there is a light breeze. It's currently actually in the 20s, it's around 22 degrees Celsius which is just unheard of over here in Iceland. But anyway let's carry on travelling. waterfall. This is Detifoss, Europe's most powerful waterfall and as you can see these conditions are so harsh but the Icelandic horse is really well adapted to live in these conditions so let's go ride some. Here we are at Lava Horse. So we're here at Lava Horse near Husavik. We've just travelled up from the west. So I'm here with Tor. So tell me a bit more about Lava Horse. Yeah, Lava Horses is a tourist company uh, with uh, horse riding. It's a farm that's been in the family for 200 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so my husband's from here. His father is from here and so on. Uh, we do riding tours every day during the summer. So a lot of the time when tourists come to Iceland, they come to the south because it's quite near the airport. So we're actually here in the north and it's so beautiful. Tell me a bit more about it. Uh, I, think, I, I think it's true. It's a lot of people that come to the south, but the north is it's amazing. So it's waterfalls. It's, it's not so crowded as well. Yes. That's what makes it a little bit uh, calmer here. <laughs> So here I have an Icelandic saddle and they do look very similar to dressage saddles. However, dressage saddles are deeper and higher at the back. So it's time to get some horses tacked up. And he has like a staff. Oh yeah, <laughs> underneath that forelock. Hello. Mm -hmm. This is Tigul. Tigul. And in Tigul. Yeah. It's um, the, when you play cards, you have heart and is it? Diamonds. diamonds yeah. yeah and this in Icelandic tigul it's a diamond oh <laughs> that's so cool yeah. flip that over hey palomino hey tigul with horses there's always going to be grooming so time to give you a groom mate you've got a big mane try and get underneath that <laughs> Oh my goodness, my whole life I've never seen a mane in person this long. It's like brushing Rapunzel's hair. There's something else different with Icelandic horses than many other horses. Uh, most people, they want to do everything on the left side of the horse. But I usually tell the people that, uh, or horses, they haven't learned this rule yet. So for them, it doesn't matter. I'll let you take the lead if you like. <laughs> Your horse is very used to have the lead. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't mind He's, taking the lead then. Yeah. As long as you tell me I'm going in the right direction. Oh, you are. <laughs> yeah. So it's absolutely beautiful here. We've just um, done a couple of bits of uh, tolt. I'm still getting used to it. It's, <laughs> it's very, very new to me still, but it is a lot of fun. They do go pretty fast, they don't can. they? Yeah. yeah. He's a fast one as well. Yes, I've got the fast one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Three thousand miles from home Trying to say That I will get there soon Thirty days I walk down this way Singing my madness to the moon 
I met a cat on a tree, and it talked to me about things we don't see. I asked it, how do I know which is the right way to go to get me home? And it said, don't look for a reason, don't look for another way, cause anyway we'll get you home, you can get lost. Wow, that was absolutely incredible, galloping across this black sand here. They go really fast. They might be small, but they're very nippy. <laughs> Good boy. After our ride, it was then time to put the horses to bed in their summer paddock. And the horses were so excited. They were waiting by the gate. They knew when it was bedtime. So we had to do it Icelandic style. We all got in the old Hilux and herded them down. And it was just magical with the mountains in the background. But also, it looks really bright outside, but it was actually about 9, 10 o'clock at night because in the Icelandic summers, it just doesn't get dark. I've just got back from our ride and oh my goodness, the scenery was just so beautiful and now I'm sitting back and relaxing and I can still see the horses right there in the mountains from our room. Okay, so it's another beautiful day here in Iceland. I'm here with Hilta Helka and today we're going to do go on another trail ride but first I thought for some fun we'd go through some Icelandic words to different like things so what is Icelandic for horse? Hestur. Hestur. I'll try my best. Okay and what's saddle? Hnakur. Hnakur. <laughs> and bridle? Bestli. Bestli. And um what about riding hat or helmet? Hjalmur. Oh my gosh, that's going to be difficult. Halj. <laughs> Say again. Hjalmur. Halljur. <laughs> okay, I haven't quite got that one yet. Um, so thank you very much. Should we go um, get the horses then? Yeah. Cool. I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Tora and Hilda Helka from Lava Horses who just welcomed us into the family and into the farm, went on some beautiful trail rides that was just incredible but I really didn't want to leave but then it was time to move on and explore more of the island. farm in the centre of Iceland so really far away from the sea and I'm here with Aki and we're going on a little tour around the horse farm so let's have a look around. So here we have one of the stallions and he is absolutely gorgeous and we've just seen some of his foals which has been really nice as well. So it's nice to meet you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but all of the foals are having a sleep today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See if the... <laughs> I think, don't go away. Gotta roll on under. Yeah, roll under. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, okay, he's not so... This mare is... Uh, it's not pony, like you yeah, see. This yeah, is, She's like 150 centimeters from shoulders and, and down. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so... So they usually have their babies around the same sort of time each year? Yeah, we, we usually try to have it early. Yeah. We want to have them in, in May. Yeah. Nice. When the grass starts to be green. Yeah. You know, have all the summer. The summer is short enough, so yeah. <laughs> so we want to have have it early. Yeah. And then they are so prepared for the winter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. And here we have a pregnant mare. So usually their gestation period is about eleven months. So she'll be expecting in again late April or early May. So something about this breed is that Icelandic horses have such a lovely temperament. They're so nice. So this girl here is so sweet. 
So these foals are usually born late April or early May, so they're born right at the beginning of summer where the weather's the best and also the grass is the best as well. So here we have a stone arch that's made of lava that apparently has been here for thousands of years. It looks so incredible. <laughs> Aki was just telling me the story about how there was a two-year-old stallion called Müller and he was over on the other side of the river and on this side of the river there were lots of young mares and apparently he managed to get across the whole river, make it to the other side and go through the arch to get to the mares and he's now gone on to become one of Iceland's top stallions. Imagine having this view at the end of your paddock. Iceland has definitely thrown in some amazing surprises along this trip. So here we have Krista riding one of her horses and something really interesting about here in Iceland is that the indoor arena and the barn, everything is insulated to keep it nice and warm for the winter because it does get really cold here. <laughs> So something that I've just found out is that apparently in Iceland you don't pat the horse, you just stroke it, so that's very different. <laughs> so this is Melkaka, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and um, I'm just going to have a quick little sit on her, but she's absolutely lovely. <laughs> Yeah, she's very quick. <laughs> so she is a very speedy chestnut mare. Thank you for my ride today. <laughs> very quick. <laughs> In the distance you can actually see Iceland's Long Glacier, so it's 50 kilometres long and 20 kilometres wide and wow, what a view! <laughs> wow, look at this! So we've just had an amazing hike to Goodfoss. I'm here with Timmy. Looks like he's enjoying himself as well. The view here is absolutely stunning. Like also we're on the east side of the waterfall so we get a lot better view and it just looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> Okay everybody, my Iceland adventure has now come to a close. I'd just like to say a huge thank you to all of the Icelanders for making this trip so special. So Gudmar, Hilta Helka, Tora, Aki and Krissa, thank you so much for making this trip just so spectacular. Also riding the Icelandic horses has been absolutely incredible. Also if you're new or have not done so already, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you all next time. Bye!